We are so excited to be here today. Uh, so the first time I met Paul, so this was many years ago, I walked in and he said, Karen, I created this sun in a jar. I got this star in a jar. I'm like, you're kidding me. He's like, oh yeah, all that stuff you've learned, put it on the back of your brain because I'm going to show you something awesome. Well, I'm telling you, this is an amazing invention. You can't buy this. Like, there's no way. But this is just to show off. This is to show off Paul and some of the really neat ways that elements work and that uh, that chemistry works. And so we want to just jump in here and Paul, I'm let you take it away because there's sure. no possibility I can explain this. Now, sure. I'm going to hit rewind and watch this video maybe 150 times. I don't know. And and then maybe I can say it, but yeah. take it away. Sounds You're amazing. Great. So what this really is, is a oversimplification of what Dragon really is. It's it's combining a, uh, a yin and yang energy frequency together. And they both attract, they they want what each other, each other has, there's value in that exchange. So contrary to what um, they teach in science, um, so we talked already about the periodic table is really a periodic table of energy. Um, the universe is actually magnetic and light. Um, it's not gravitational driven. It's such a weak force compared to magnetism. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is I'm going to um, induce an electrical and magnetic field. This, this outer ball is the male or um, yang field. And this silver one inside is the yin or female field. Fascinating. So just like males and females like to do, they are going to go at it. So w with no further ado, I'm going to now put this over in order to help adjust. And we're going to turn on a vacuum pump so that we can mimic outer space. And let's see, I think it's right here. Now you've created a special generator for this. Is this what yeah. you're doing? So you've created specific a, frequencies, male frequencies and female frequencies? Yep, it's both okay. male and female mm -hmm. at the same time. Wow. But again, it, it's not canceling out because I've created space. I've created a neutral distance that they don't cancel out. They're actually, so every system in the universe is an opposition of system. Mm -hmm. So if you, like electricity for example, if you cut the electricity um, on one leg, the whole thing collapses. There's no system. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that send and receive, that yin and yang happening. Um, if they come in contact with each other, then they can neutralize and cancel out like a salt or something. But what this is going to do is there's enough design in space that keeps it separate. And um, so instead of a sun actually being a, um, uh, a fusion generator eating its own hydrogen and helium, and over time, you know, it's going to use all of its um, fuel, it's actually being the sun is actually being powered by something else. There's something else that's acting on that female field, if you will, that's creating that sun. So what you're going to see in here, as there's enough, um, the vacuum pump is pumping out the air, um, then eventually you're going to start seeing a orange dot, which is the male side, and a purple dot on the female side, and they're going to start reacting together. And then a purple plasma is going to start forming around the female field. Then it's going to move inside, and magnetism, not gravity, is going to pull it all together. And that plasma, or the baby of these two, is a sun. So it's in a womb in the female, if you will. So that's what this is. Um, if it was a engine of fusion, then you'd have a super hot core, you know, getting cooler as it moves out. But it's actually the opposite. The atmosphere is the hottest. It's it's uh, surface is even is, is so cool. It's like six thousand degrees. And then inside is so um, cool that you can see sunspots. You can actually look into the core, and there is so cool in temperature that that's what a sunspot is. So you're telling me what I've learned in school was not appropriate, was not right. It's based true. on a gravitational theory, and we believe that it is a magnet. Right, and magnetism is forty thousand times stronger than gravity. Absolutely. Why is this purple? If it's supposed to be the sun, why is it not yellow? Explain the difference, please. Yeah, so that basically relates to what kind of plasma is being generated based on the element that's present there. Mm -hmm. So the sun is yellow because of the hydrogen and helium makeup, whereas this is um, purple-ish, and it will actually condense into kind of a, um, a orange um, because it's mostly oxygen and nitrogen because I just sucked out the air we're breathing um, to make the, the vacuum. Yep. So j what this is really doing is something a male field is sending energy to the female and that relationship is producing this energy that's now moving into her womb and magnetism is going to pull it together. 
so that's why I show this is an overly simplistic demonstration of why with the different dragons there's a male and a female or a yin and yang. Um, and this is just a way to show that, but it's also cool to see a, a son be born. And so here in probably five or so, ten minutes, that, that will get tighter and tighter and tighter and it'll be an actual visible sphere. Uh, you'll actually see a little core and it'll even shoot out a, a beagle jet of pure energy. Um, <laughs> So, so awesome. Uh, a quasar. So the sun is sending out um, quasar energy to the earth. So yeah, we're... and Measured so, by, what's the term that the so, sun measures in? Well, so something's feeding the sun. Mm -hmm. The sun then is feeding our moon and our earth, mm -hmm. all of that. Everything's being fed and it's a system. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as immaterial matter and there's no such thing as um, non-energized um, matter right matter is capacitated to receive light and 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 uh, energy so when the two work together that's what's happening here with the sun it's just that these are this is an example of our red dragon energy to kind of show so what's happening inside that female is similar to what's happening to our blue dragon water what's happening on the outside male is what happens to our male um, blue dragon water Excellent. so different generators doing different things but we're setting it up in a system so as long as there's a system and then that that relationship can exchange, and there's value in that exchange, uh, that's, that's how so everything works. So what got you so excited about Eastern philosophy with the yin and the yang? What, when did you put all that together with Western science? When, when did this just get you when you got passionate and so excited to share this? Um, so as I started getting more and more formulas um, donated to us that were mostly Chinese to begin with and then started moving Middle Eastern and then and, and Polynesian, etc. Um, the uh, I was trying to take an overly simplistic approach to the explanation of Chinese medicine and Middle Eastern medicine. Mm -hmm. Because Middle Eastern medicine is very focused on the energy component or the red dragon side and the Chinese is the, is the matter component. Mm -hmm. And so by mixing the two together, it's, it's a, I believe, a more holistic side to that. But the, the word dragon is actually, um, in all um, cultures and ancient um, myths, the dragon is actually a healing thing. and so. Um, now a um, or a serpent especially if it's flying if it's a flying serpent like Quetzalcoatl to the Native Americans or um, the dragon to the Chinese or the um, the snake that was lifted on a pole to the Middle Eastern mm -hmm. beliefs um, it's all the same image of the caduceus which is still what you see on every uh, hospital and every ambulance is that winged pole with snakes it's mm -hmm. a flying vortexing serpent um, and so that is a universal symbol of health or long life or longevity. It, it means all those things. And so um, taking in that and kind of mixing that all together is where we use dragon. Ah, makes sense. Yeah. So Paul, this little dot of male frequency, and Mark, if you can catch that over on this side here, is that, that's what's that's actually the source. feeding the female frequency. Yep, so that is what is sending energy there, to the female. That's the source. Yep. And how is it sending that energy to it? in a vortex, so all energy travels in a vortex. Um, scientists usually refer to the two-dimensional version, so as, as it spins, um, if you smash it flat, it looks like it's up and down in a wave, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's actually a vortexing, it's three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a vortex from the side and you could see it, you'd actually, it'd look like a wave. It'd look like it's going up and down, yeah. but, it's, but it, uh, it's going like this, but it's really going like that. A vortex, excellent. Yep. So all energy travels in vortex. And then a comment made earlier by Dr. Troy, you seem to have almost an, a field around it, like rings. Can you explain what those rings are? Coming so this the is the male field that's on the outside and then the female field on the inside. So the energy is acting on the actual metal field. Obviously in space, there's not this construct, mm -hmm. right? It's all done through some method we don't understand, but it's this principle of energy is being sent from point A to point B and then and then sent out again so these tiny little you know if you look inside the female um, ball there the triangular piece you'll start seeing like this um, purple fuzz shooting out mm -hmm. that's sending energy out mm -hmm. so that would be similar to like what our Sun is sending to all the planets our moon our earth so the Sun is being fed by another something. source by something and then the Sun is sending out to the world right. its radiation its heat its gift right that's fascinating. Yep, but it has to be a system. It has to be a system. And a yin and a yang. Yep. Everything's a yin and a yang. It is. Everything. Yep. So I'm looking for it. I can't find it. Where did the mail go? Where'd the mail frequency go, Paul? 
it's gone from a really dominant one source to kind of fading out and it might be 30 or 40 different spots. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's feeding the female. Right. Now what are we going to see next? I know I've come in here before and there's been like this incredible strand of electronic activity happening. What am I seeing then? Yep. Basically these tiny little trumpets, if you will, shooting out in these little triangles inside the female ball, um, magnetically combined to be one quasar, and which is pure electrons. You can actually take a magnet and bend it, move it to the different part of the sun or whatever. Amazing. Yeah. And what is the number one thing you've taken back after making this? What is the one realization you have? I know that you know magnetic field is obviously much stronger than gravity, but what's the big thing that you take home from this? The big thing is that every system in the universe, atoms, the, the entire cosmos, everything's a yin and yang. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything's a system, you know, and our bodies are an entire universe of systems and each system's a yin and yang. Mm -hmm. So as you breathe in, you have a particular pH that absorbs oxygen. But then when you breathe out, that changes and the pH is now able to hold on to CO2 to let it get out of you. Mm -hmm. So again, and you have, um, so there's a yin and yang happening, but then you also have the respiratory, which is the end to the yang of the cardiovascular. And I mean, there's the, just on and on and on. There's no end to how many systems or mm -hmm. yin and yang scenarios that, we, that you can find. That's fascinating. Well, thank you very much. This has been great. I'm excited to get this posted and for people to see this amazing technology. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you're welcome. Been amazing.